Good morning, church. We are going through the Gospel of Mark. And the last Sunday, we uh, enter in the Gospel of Mark. We give an introduction why Gospel of Mark is very important and that Jesus gives hope and that Jesus' ministry, his words, his healings, his good news of Jesus, uh, good news of God can change and restore and give you eternal hope and present hope for every day situation. Today we will enter in uh, Mark chapter 2. Jesus started to minister in Galilee. He was in Nazareth, then he was in Capernaum, and then he, this is an amazing happening uh, 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 dis described by, by, by few uh, evangelists. is a text where Jesus healed men who were paralyzed, but also he gave a good message. What is his ministry? Why he came? He didn't just came to heal people, but he came here to offer forgiveness. We can see the end of chapter 1 is described that Jesus spent time with God, a solitude place. He has a power of God that he can do this ministry. And this is a great, great reminder for us that we need to spend time with God on a daily basis. And we need to ask Jesus to touch our life with his hope. In chapter 2, I will read the verses from 1 to 12. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with the visitor that there is no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying the paralytic, paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug the hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man to, on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some teachers of religion law who were sitting there thought to themselves, Who is he saying? What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So they asked him, Why do you question this in your hearts? It is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And then the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. Then they were amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. We can see four things. Why Jesus' ministry was very powerful. Why the hope that he promoted and the message was so powerful. First thing what we can see, we can see the power of word of God. He was in a house, he was teaching Bible and people were amazed. People wanted to listen. People were, were amazed by his word. Word of God is powerful. We believe that the Word of God is powerful, can touch your heart. And the Bible is talking about Bible, the Word, the Word of God is like a hammer who is destroying every hard stone. The Word of God is like a, like a sword. And the Word of God is amazing. And, uh, and that's the reason why Jesus, uh, Logos, real Word of God, were teaching the Word of God to the people around uh, uh, them himself. He was in the house of uh, Peter, most likely. And if you travel in, uh, in Israel, you can find that house there. And he was teaching people the word of God. And everybody were listening in the Gospel of Matthew. And also we read last, last Sunday, the people were amazed and say, he's teaching differently. Uh, he, he's teaching with authority. He's not teaching like our religious leaders. And that's a question for all of us. We need to pray to God. We need to value the Word of God. We need to read the Word of God. We need to eat spiritually the Word of God. And we need to allow the Word of God to touch our heart, to show power into our lives. And I think this is a very, very important thing that we can memorize when we are sometimes in a hospital or sometimes in some dark places where we cannot open the Bible, some memorized scripture can come and give you hope. Some promises from Word of God can straighten and encourage you 
in those moments. Read the Bible, study the Bible, and live the Bible. Live that word of God. In the book of Ezra, chapter 7, 10, that Ezra uh, was studying the word of God. He was living the word of God and he was teaching the word of God. And may God help us in 2021 that we can pay attention to the word of God and that we can study word of God in small groups, alone, when we are home, with the one and one with people uh, in our church. But also we can apply and ask God to give us the power of the Holy Spirit to apply that word in daily life and that we can teach people around ourselves uh, word of God because they can meet God through the word of God word of God is like a ID card of God we can know who is he but also we can know what is the good news and how we can approach to him uh, let's pray that our churches can be like this that people will go into the local churches and listen in word of God the churches can be packed because there will be a powerful preaching of the word of God. Today, unfortunately, there is a lot of churches around the world who are not who are too much seeker sensitive that they are not teaching the word of God in a context. They are more focusing on some stories or some stories from history, but they are forgetting importance of the word of God. Jesus was teaching the word of God and there was a power there. Second, we can see there was a four men who remembered their friend who was paralyzed. This four men is a picture of power, of friendship, of fellowship. These four men, we don't know their names, they stopped their daily activities. They said, let's we bring our friend to Jesus because only Jesus can help him. These four men had a faith. And Jesus was amazed by their faith. And he said to uh, the, the Mark is written here, when Jesus was, saw their faith, he was touched and surprised by their faith. These four men was carrying on the mat his friend. It, it, it wasn't easy to travel a couple hundred meters or kilometers to, to, to bring uh, their friend in the front of Jesus. But they were disappointed. There were some obstacles there. There were people. The neighbors didn't want to open the door. And if I was one of them there, I would say, oh, I knew my neighbors are bad and I will go home. I will be disappointed. But these four men showed the faith. They were so determined that they went on the roof. And in those times, the roof was very uh, flat and it was made not from the concrete, but from the mud. And, uh, and you can uh, easily make a hole. Uh, you can make a hole on the roof uh, if you wanted to make a hole. And they came there as a team. They came on the roof. They um, find where Jesus was teaching. And they, as a team, they make a hole and brought their friend in the front of Jesus' feet. You can imagine, imagine th this picture. They destroyed the roof of Peter, most likely. They destroyed the roof of somebody to help their friend. These four men are a picture of the church. This four men is a picture of prayer group. This four men is a picture of fellowship. We need to be like them. They are a good example for us that we can be a people of faith. When we are praying for our friends, our relatives who are not believers, we need to pray these prayers in a faith. We need to dig some roofs around ourselves to do everything in our power to bring people in the front of Jesus. Sometimes we are so comfortable in our zones we have, we have a nice life and we are not ready to get out from our comfort zones. We are not ready to do something unusual that somebody can receive Jesus, that somebody can become a Christian. What roofs you need to dig in your life for somebody around yourself? What comfort zones you need to step out that you can bring somebody who, that you love in the front of God, in the front of Jesus? That's a question for all of us. There is one story I want to share uh, with you. Uh, there was a group of students who were going uh, to Bulgaria in a train. The guitar player, worship leader, he had a beard, long beard, but in a passport he was without beard. And the Bulgarian uh, police people, they didn't believe that that is uh, that person in a passport. And then they wanted to shave his beard on the, on the border. And uh, his fiance was in love with him only like that, like with a beard. And she told him, you should not 
destroy your beard, uh, otherwise you're in trouble. And then uh, he returned back and asked the, the group of students to pray while the Bulgarian police are making decision. And uh, they were praying. And one guy who was uh, in a prayer uh, the most loud, he said, God, you opened the Red Sea for the people of Israel. You stopped the sun when Joshua was running for uh, his enemies. Uh, you did many miracles in the Bible. What is for you to stop the hand of police, Bulgarian police? To not to shave the beard of our brother and he was so strong in his prayer and then when he finished with the word uh, in the name of Jesus amen the same person he stood up and say hey let's go there to see how they will cut his beard <laughs> which means he was loud with his words but he didn't pray with the faith and sometimes I found myself when I'm praying for some cousin or somebody who's close to me, and I said, Lord, please change this person. Please influence this person with your word. And then in myself, I have a voice. Oh, even God cannot help him. When we pray, when we do something, do it in a faith. We need to have faith in a big God, strong God, who can change every human heart. Amen? And this is the power of this friendship. And sometimes... In a Christian fellowship, we are just coming and going like in theater. We need to be for each other. Maybe some, some of us, we need to be on that mat that we can pray for each other and support each other. Sometimes you will be on this mat, sometimes somebody else will be. And you will be one of these four men who are showing genuine fellowship. The third power is power of word of God. Jesus was preaching the word, the people were listening power of friendships they forced people they didn't stop they did it everything what they could do to for the for, for their friend and you can imagine like when, when when this man was healed how this four man was happy and there is no greater have help when you pray uh, happiness when you pray for somebody and when you bring somebody somewhere to conference to give them a book and somebody committed life to Jesus there is no greater joy of these people who eat who bring them to the church, who bring them to the event, who give them a book and point them to Jesus. Don't miss that joy. Do everything. Dig every roof that you can dig. And uh, just for the sake of, of, of people's soul. And you can imagine what, 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 what this friend was come to them and say, thank you guys that you didn't give up. Thank you guys that you came on the roof. And uh, I can imagine one of the guys uh, of these four men is coming down to the Peter and said, don't worry, we will repair your roof. <laughs> we will send somebody to help you with this roof. The third thing that I see in this text is the power of forgiveness. And that's amazing. Jesus didn't heal him immediately. Jesus uh, forgave him sins. Uh, Jesus uh, was a God and uh, he was a man and he knew what is in a people's heart. And Jesus pointed to everyone that his main mission is to bring forgiveness of sins and immediately people said only God can do that in their thoughts they said that and then Jesus with this action with these words he wanted to identify himself as a God because God can only forgive the sins to today and even that time Jesus performed and he said I'm here with a special mission I'm here with a special task. I came here to go on the cross, to die for your sins. And that's the way you can receive forgiveness of sins. Jesus came here to forgive our sins. His name is Joshua. God is my savior. And when the angels told to, to Jesus' father, he will save the sins of the people. Jesus, Jesus, Joshua means God is our savior because he will save the people from their sins but also God is a God Emmanuel God is with us God want to forgive our sins God want to forgive your sins whatever you have done bad in the past there is no great sin that God cannot forgive through Jesus that's the reason why he came on the earth not that we can have a nice Christmas and give gifts and feel nice but that we can reconnect with God that we can be forgiven from past and that we can receive the power of the Holy Spirit for a present and that we can receive eternal hope for a future that was the reason of Jesus mission Jesus forgive the sins 
to this person, but also Jesus proved and showed that he's God. He healed the man. Every healing and every miracle in New Testament was pointing to the Jesus message of forgiveness. Every healing uh, today needs to point us and bring us close to Jesus that we can understand who is he and how he can offer us forgiveness of our sins. How he can offer us the, the, the vitamin for our body. How he can offer us the real vaccine for our spiritual virus which is blocking our relationship with our God Creator. And the fourth thing what we can see here it's a power of change life, new life. This man when he was healed his hope became alive. He started to walk. He was happy. His life got a new meaning. He can live again. And Jesus told him, stand up, walk, and take your mat. This is like a three actions. Stand up, walk, but pick up your mat. Why this mat was very important? Some people say, pick up the mat was a picture of his testimony. I was there. I met Jesus. Now I'm here. I'm standing. And this is the three actions in our life as well, which is very important to mention. When we met Jesus, when we trust him, when we accept the gospel and offer that Jesus is giving us forgiveness of our sins, we became a new people. The Holy Spirit changed and transformed our lives. We became a new people. We have a new life. But it's always good to bring your mat, to remember where you have been before, how God saved you, not because of your good works, but because God's work of love on the cross for our sins. That was why everybody, when they saw the life of this man, they celebrate and they say, we never saw that. And today, when people see the, your life, when we see the former drug addict who became a Christian, when we see the former alcohol guy or criminal or somebody who was thief or somebody that got radically transformed the life, somebody who was depressed now is joyful because of Jesus, Everybody's surprised and they're celebrating God because of that. Are you a new person? Did you believe? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? His grace and mercy can change you. Your sins can be forgiven based on what Jesus has done on the cross. Don't miss this opportunity to get a new hope, to get a new life, and to get eternal life after this life on earth. That's the reason why Jesus' ministry was very powerful. Power of the Word of God. Let's pray to God that we can be serious to study, memorize, to teach, to listen good sermons. Word of God is powerful. Power of friendship. Let's be like these four men who can dig the holes around and do everything to get out from our comfort zones, daily routines, to help somebody, to bring somebody in front of Jesus because only Jesus can change life of people. Power of forgiveness. We want to be thankful to God because He forgives our sins and He's forgiving our sins on a daily basis. He can do that only based on grace and mercy of His Son, Jesus Christ. And power of change life. God wants to transform your life. God wants to change some areas in our lives. Allow Him open our doors uh, of our hearts that he can come cleanse and change and transform maybe that is your relationship with your spouse maybe that is your relationship with your parents maybe that is your relationship with other people maybe that's your career maybe that's your relationship over a student life as a student God wants to change and transform because transform because he's a living God and, and his word and his power of the Holy Spirit can change and transform your life. Don't miss this opportunity. And let's we pray that we can experience the power of Jesus' ministry in 2021. He wants us to minister to us and show His love and power in our life. And are we ready to do something unusual in, in this year to bring friends to Jesus? And may God help us that our churches, our ministries, our lives can look powerful like that was the case of the Jesus ministry but also that was the case of the first Christians in the first century. Let's pray. Heavenly Father we are praying to you and we are thankful for this message. 
Thank you for this text. Thank you for this story, unusual story. And thank you, God, that you didn't left us alone. You want to forgive us. You want to give us a new life. You want to portray Jesus as God. And that we will never forget that Jesus is not is just some religious teacher or healer. He is a God who came to bring us close to you. Help us to understand that and help us to be like these four men who sacrifice a lot for the benefit of the friend. Help us that we can sacrifice, that we can serve, that we can show love and hope to other people who need to meet Jesus. This year, help us, God. We are praying this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.